the sights and smells um, the first few days after the storm hit were uh, were very sobering um, to kind of realize the catastrophe that hit that area and the magnitude that that it was just it was sad it was very very sad to see you've got boats in the middle of roadways uh, you've got boats in neighborhoods you don't even know where they came from you know when you're talking a 28 foot storm surge um, you can see it you can see it all the way inland and it was very very uh, very sad for those people. Hurricane Ian came by and had different plans of, that we had for our location and our little fishing town. Um, the first day that we got to the house, we actually uh, jumped piling to piling, walked through water, jumped on the bridge, walked, <laughs> and we thought, my God, this is just horrible. And then we came here and little hope we saw our house standing and then we realized while walking through it um, it's gone it's it's completely destroyed like a lot of other people there's houses obviously are destroyed it was about a day or so after the hurricane we went forward with damage assessments and we figured out very quickly, because of all the damage we had within our district, we couldn't handle it all ourselves. So I reached out to District 7, Richard Moss, which is the director over there. He jumped right on it, got a team together, and they went down and spent all weekend down at Sanibel Causeway doing a damage assessment so we could kind of figure out how bad it was and what the plan of attack was. The impact of the barrier islands was tremendous, not only from the winds, but mainly from the storm surge the damage that occurred to the causeway itself, the surge actually washed away the causeway. So there's no access to these islands. So I got a phone call that we were going to have to procure an emergency design build contract to grant access to Sanibel Island. We were doing the first emergency design build in the state. Now typically when you talk about contractors, and consultants, the way they work, you're competing against each other and all that stuff. In this case, everyone said, egos aside, this is a must win situation for us because we need to provide access to these residents as soon as possible, right? They worked together as a team. Nobody cared which company they're working for, as a team, and they made it happen. We would be walking down the hallway trying to figure out what was going to be the solution to a problem and the next thing you know we're in a car driving to Fort Myers because of a need. So it's, it, it, there's no time to watch your position description. There's no time to think. Sometimes you just have to go. Well, I think the biggest point I get across is what the partnerships that came together. You know, when it comes to the EOC, I was part of a multidisciplinary force, including construction, maintenance, operations, also with our local partners like Lee DOT um, and Central Office and the, the general greater community who came together to really um, make a difference for this community. It was very inspiring. Uh, the passion that was behind it. Everybody just went in and, and put in the efforts, District 7, District 1, all the departments that went into this, and the firms as well. You know, they were very cooperative and doing everything they could to make sure that we did this as soon as possible. It was an emergency. It was like one big family where everybody, you know, jumps in to come together to do cleanup, to help our, you know, not only our team members, but our partners with the cities and the counties. It was all collaborative. Certainly when we were negotiating with them, there was no gamesmanship or anything. My role was actually to help support not only the employees and their needs, but also the EOC. So in doing that, we had to wear many hats. I had employees going down delivering stickers for coolers. I had employees delivering water and food and whatever the case may be, generators. 
That area was completely devastated, so just finding the goods that they needed, we had to go all over the state. We spent a night driving around looking for food for people that we had to take down there. The base camp down there is one of the most amazing things that I've seen. They have sleeping cars, they have laundry services, some of the things you don't think about. These people needed clean clothes, so we were able to get that for them. Having the right person out in the field, very important. So we picked Katie Sherrard. She is a star for us. She knew while volunteering that she's got to live there 24-7. We rented an RV for her, and she was staying right there with the team. Josh Jester, who works for Katie, he volunteered to go down and spend time there because one, he cared about providing that much needed access, but also he cared so much about his boss, Katie, that he wanted to be there. I tell you, it's like a dream team. My name is Katie Sherrard. I'm the FDOT project manager for the Sanibel Causeway Reconstruction Project after the Hurricane Ian damage. So today is day 15 of contract time for us. And today we opened at 10.30 a.m. this morning the temporary roadway for civilian access so that homeowners and business owners and contractors, as well as supplies and materials can get to the island much faster than what was happening by them taking the barge. What really makes us paradise is the people. Uh, how fast the county, everyone's getting stuff done. We were thought, thinking months. Now they're making, they're making a bridge. They're, they're fixing it and they're making roads. And that part's amazing. People are amazing. Things could be replaced. Everyone has worked so hard to get to where we are. And we've finished 10 days early, 10 days earlier than expected. This morning as we opened the roadway and we saw the line of traffic coming through, as tired and exhausted as everyone was, to see the people lined up on the side of the road holding signs, talking about how excited they were to return to Sanibel and just so excited to see us coming that way to let them know that they could get access, it, it brought tears to a lot of us. The resilient team in my district and every district who came to help us out through responding to Hurricane Ian, and in particularly in Sanibel and Pine Island, the resiliency of our partnership where our consultant community and the contractor community stepped up to be with my star team who's out there to make it happen is what made Sanibel a success, is what made restoring Pine Island a success. So we are so thankful for everyone who participated in it.